to Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm the Reverend Tiffany Sapp, the minister of this church, and my pronouns are she and her. I am so glad to be here with you today. Thank you for bringing your unique gifts and presence to our gathering as we do our best to build the beloved community. If you are visiting us for the first time today, you are especially welcome. Our greeters at the welcome table by the door can help you get oriented if you have any questions. And if you have little ones, our greeters can show you the way to the nursery, which is available during the service for children ages six and younger. Please be aware that our services are filmed and posted on YouTube and that there's a chance that you might be seen in our YouTube video. If you wanna make sure that you are absolutely not on camera, please sit in the perfume free zone over here or in the section closest to the back table and the library. Our opening hymn is a celebration of spring and blooming flowers and is a favorite for flower communion. It is spring has now unwrapped its flowers in the gray larger hymnal, hymn number 63. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing hymn number 63, Spring Has Now Unwrapped Its Flowers. To worship is the lyrics to a song written by Unitarian Universalist seminarian James Underberg. Though I try to be the best me that I can, there are times that the best me is far from who I am. When the fire that burns inside gets out of hand, when my tattered wings can't find a place to land. Maybe I'm all right. Maybe I'm okay. Love will have the final say, and nothing that I do can take my good away. The sun shines down on every leaf, and the earth holds up the strong just like the weak. And the air flows free through every loving breeze, because the rain don't know a rosebud from a weed. When life is tumbling on and you can't keep up, and just to get up out of bed is hard enough, when your dreams feel miles away from where you're stuck, maybe it's all right. Maybe it's okay. Just being you is enough today, and nothing you can do can take your good away. Because the sun shines down on every single leaf, and the earth holds up the strong just like the weak. The air flows free through every loving breeze, and the rains don't know a rosebud from a weed. And what if life is not a maze of right and wrong, but a wild and open field filled with song, or to dance among the lilies knowing you belong? I would open up my heart and sing along. No matter what I've done, to the earth, air, rain, and sun, I am still someone. 
because the sun shines down on every single leaf and the earth holds up the strong just like the weak. The air flows free through every loving breeze and the rains don't know a rosebud from a weed. Please sit with us in stillness. Welcome. Today's service is our annual flower communion, a Unitarian Universalist tradition created by Norbert and Maya Chopik for the Unitarian Church in Czechoslovakia in 1923. Some of us here call it the pollen communion. <laughs> this ceremony immerses us in the symbolism of flowers and reminds us of the importance of connecting with each other in community. Like a big basket of flowers, we are diverse and beautiful. The Flower Communion connects us to Unitarian Universalism's past as the story of Norbert and Maya Chopek come from a formative time in Unitarianism, World War II. The ceremony connects us to the present as we celebrate the people who are here with us in community today. This is one of the days that I love the way we're set up because we can see each other and say, yes, we are here together. And it connects us to our future, knowing that flowers inevitably bring more life in the cycles of pollination, fruit, and seed. It's a hopeful metaphor as this community continues to grow and become all that it can be. Good morning. I am Sarah, and I am your service leader today, and I use the pronoun she, hers. I'm really excited for Flower Communion. We welcome you, old friends and new, online and in person. Whether you are a dandelion or a rose, a dogwood or an iris, no matter what soil you came from or are planted in, no matter your fragrance, the color of your petals, or the shape of your leaves, your presence is welcome and celebrated in this big bouquet of community. Just as you are, you are welcome here. The lighting of the chalice is a uniquely Unitarian Universalist moment where we celebrate the power and compassion of our community. Our chalice has its origins as a symbol of hope and liberation when the Unitarian Service Committee hastily designed it and then stamped it on the documents that they were using to help Jewish refugees escape Nazi persecution on the eve of World War II. Here, in this community, we connect the lighting of our chalice with the words of our vision statement, which remind us of who we want to be together. Please say the words of our vision statement with me, which are printed in your bulletin, as we light the chalice together. We work together as a church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. There won't be a story for all ages today because this is an inclusive and interactive service. We invite our young people to listen to how we are all like flowers. Maybe you can even imagine what kind of flower you would be if you could be one. We hope you will ask your parents to help you with the flower communion part when we get to it and that you will think about what sharing flowers means to all of us. At the first flower communion in Prague, people were asked to bring a flower of their choice, either from their own gardens or from their field or roadside. Each person was asked to place their own flower in the vase to show that it was by their own free will that they joined with this community. As one vase contained a wide variety of flowers, it became a powerful symbol for a diverse congregation that was made more beautiful by its differences. We are now going to invite you, each of you, to bring your flower to this central basket right here in front of me.
as a symbol of your free choice to connect to the community gathered here as a member, friend, or a very welcome visitor. If you didn't bring your own flower, and I'm gonna raise my hand because I always forget, this is the first year I've ever brought one, you can choose from one of the extras located by the name tag table, which is way back over that way, to represent what you bring to this community. And you can then also put it in the basket as well. Reverend Tiffany offers the first flower for the many beloved members of this community who are separated from us by distance and circumstance. By what we create together that is beautiful and we needed more music and we needed a bigger basket and what a blessing <laughs> what a blessing so these flowers in their diversity and beauty are already sacred just as they are but let's bless these flowers knowing that the blessings that we pour into them are going to return to all of us Think about it. What blessings do you want to share with your community? Call out a word that you want the people of our community to receive. Words like support, abundance, wisdom, love. Call them out now, loud enough that I can hear them. How would you bless us through the gifts of these flowers? <laughs> the pledge drive has come to a successful conclusion I'd be happy to report <laughs> you know I have in my notes to like restate your words but I didn't have to that was beautiful and y'all are beautiful thank you for blessing this community and blessing each other
This year, in 2024, in response to the wave of anti-LGBTQ plus legislation, the student organizers have renamed the Day of Silence to the Day of No Silence, encouraging demonstrations and other social action. It is a joy to be led by students this way, and it is a sorrow that it is needed. And so we come, bringing all that we are and everything that we carry to this very unique table of joy and sorrow, grief and hope, community and care. Today, to make room for our basket of flowers and in recognition that flowers and candles might not go so well together, we offer you stones and a bowl of water instead of our standard assortment of candles. Instead of lighting a candle, you are invited to take a stone from the table to symbolize your joy or your sorrow and to place it in the central bowl of water to entrust your joy and sorrow to the container of our community. If you wish for us to place a stone for you, please raise your hand until I acknowledge you and I will place a stone in the water for you. And our community is so much larger than just those who are in the building this morning. So we place our first stone to hold space for those who are not physically present with us, but are ever in our hearts.
1923, Norbert Chopek created the flower communion for his congregation in Prague as a new sort of ritual to celebrate the diverse beauty of humanity and the importance of open-hearted reciprocal relationships in religious community. When his wife Maya came to the United States fleeing the violence of World War II, she brought the flower communion with her. She explained that the flower communion was a celebration of what we bring to community and our commitment to journey together in curiosity, love, and justice. Our choice to add our flower to the bouquet says that we are invested in these relationships here and the ways that we want to work together. All of it says we will share with each other, especially because of our differences and the amazing ways we learn from each other's points of view. In our pluralistic diversity, we Unitarian Universalists can find teachers everywhere, especially among the flowers. This year, one of the things that the flowers are teaching me is that they bloom in their own time. The gardeners know what I'm talking about. This is my third flower communion as your minister, and every year we try to tweak the date of flower communion to allow our gardeners to bring the very best from their garden. And every year, Mother Nature has reminded me that she does not care one bit about my calendar. <laughs> my iris were not quite ready this morning. I see that a few of them were, but most of them were not. The sleepy flower teachers of my yard reminded me that so much of life is out of my control and that there is just no way to force someone to bloom before their time. Asters and goldenrod, growing wild and free, but not blooming until the late summer, remind me of the indigenous wisdom of reciprocity. In Robin Wall Kimmerer's Braiding Sweetgrass, she observes how the purple asters and yellow goldenrod grow together, and it is their contrasting colors that make them stand out and call the attention of the pollinators to them. When I look at the contrasts of our community here, I'm in awe about how we do that too. The young among us learn from the experiences of the elders among us. The elders reciprocate by letting the vision of the young move us forward. And I've seen one of the most conservative people of the church sit down with one of the most progressive people of the church and have a meal together and debate whether or not the Unitarian Universalist Association should divest from their oil investments. And while no one came away from that conversation with a changed mind, I was impressed at how we can communicate and love each other through our differences. The flower teachers of goldenrod and asters teach us that contrast is one of the superpowers of our community. And a very particular red bud tree taught me about resilience this week. This tree didn't have any sun coming to it from overhead. The light was blocked out by bigger trees, but it kept growing out horizontally, reaching for the sun, reaching for what it needed. When it couldn't get it this way, it went this way. It was a pretty funny shape. If it was out in an open field by itself, you would look at it and say, what is wrong with that tree? You could just see the effects that the hardship had had upon it. But it just kept branching out. It just kept reaching for what it needed. And it was living and blossoming despite how the challenges and deprivation had shaped it. It kept reaching for the sun as if it was saying, I'm still here, and I am still trying. The flower teachers of that little red bud tree taught me how resilient we can be. 
and all flowers everywhere teach us that we cannot be who we are meant to be until we take a little bit of a risk and open up. Flowers, like mines and parachutes, work best when open. Our flower ceremony celebrates over 100 years of seeing the strength of our diversity. And it is still a promise of a shared commitment to seek truth and justice together. It is still an invitation to be seen and cherished for who we are by each other. So in a moment, we are going to come to this table. And when we do, I want you to know that the love and the acceptance that you are seeking waits for you here. It is time now for us to share in the flower communion. I ask that as each of you in turn approach the communion basket, you do so reverently and with a sense of how important it is for each of us to address our world and one another with gentleness and compassion and love and justice. I ask that you select a flower different from the one you brought that particularly appeals to you. As you take your chosen flower, noting its particular shape and beauty, please remember to handle it carefully. It is a gift that someone else has brought to you. It represents that person's unique humanity and therefore deserves your kindest touch. Let us share in this Unitarian Universalist ritual of oneness and love. Reverend Tiffany receives the first flower on behalf of our community who cannot be here with us today. you know isn't here today and you think they'd like a flower, please come get an extra to bring to them when the services has ended. If there are none here by that point, there are also some more in the back. As our time here comes to a close, I invite you to hold your flower in your hand and see how beautiful, precious, and temporary it is. You can let all else fall away as you pay special attention to the contours of the flower in your hand. Hold this beauty in your mind and your heart and know that this moment will never come again. The fleeting nature of this gift adds to its value rather than detracts from it. So it is with each of us and the blessings of all who are gathered here. Flowers unfold slowly and gently, bit by bit in sunshine. A soul too must never be pushed or driven, but unfolds in its own perfect timing to reveal its true wonder and beauty. Our work is to be gardeners of the souls, wherever we are. Everywhere seeds are beginning to germinate, let us tend them with the greatest care. They are very tender and delicate. Let us water them with love. Our closing hymn is number 1068, Rising Green, in the Thinner Teal Hymnal. This is also when we collect the offering that supports our programs, justice efforts, and fun community building activities for the whole family. Please rise with us in body or spirit for our closing hymn, number 1068, Rising Green.
much for your generosity this week and every week. Please take some extra flowers home with you. And here is our benediction. May justice lead us to the calling of this moment and may wonder meet us right where we're at. May we discover our collaborators and our companions and may love guide us on our journey to transformation. Blessed be, amen, and go in peace.